What's going on guys, Dan Watson, and I've got the brand new Phantom 4 Pro in, and that's because I've been shooting with the Phantom 3 4K for a while. I really like this drone. The quality on it is just a little bit lower than what I would want. I would say with the bitrate that's available when shooting 4K, I'm noticing like in, in areas of a lot of detail like grass and stuff like that, there's just a little bit of artifacting in there. It's just kind of annoying me. So now that the Phantom 4 Pro has come out, now this includes a host of add-ons that this doesn't have, mainly like obstacle avoidance and some of the flight paths and follow me functions that I couldn't get on this one. Those weren't a huge deal to me, but they're very nice to have. So I'm welcoming the upgrade. And uh, I really wanna see though, if the quality is gonna be comparable. And so this is gonna be a full review of the Phantom 4 Pro. And I'm also gonna put it up against this and also the, uh, the Mavic, which I have as well. So we're gonna check out that. So stay tuned, subscribe. If I have any other videos posted yet, you're gonna see a link up here for them. But if not, subscribe and stay tuned because I'm gonna have all of those available. So I wanted to show you a comparison between these two and I'm gonna put them side by side. And I will say that right off the bat, the Phantom 4 Pro is actually a little bit smaller. And it's hard to tell a big weight difference, but it's definitely, it definitely looks and feels smaller with the exception of these huge stands. It's actually very, very compact. In fact, it would be nice if you could actually take those off because it is a very, very compact drum. Now, the battery on this is actually a lot larger. And so that's something that you're gonna notice is that it's, it's a massive spot right now that that battery fills in. And you will notice that. Now the power brick is also extremely large. The controller is very similar to what you're used to on the other one, but on this one, uh, this one has a different type of technology for communicating with the drone, which will let me fly it further, which is another big advancement of this one versus this unit right here. And that requires that I plug in the phone. So there's a couple extra ports on this one than I have on mine. But that's really the biggest difference there. Uh, comes with all the training manuals. Now I rented this. Uh, I rented this from lumoy.com. If you guys want a 15% coupon code, check out the link below. And the coupon code is learning cameras 15. It's one of the few places that does drone rentals, which is awesome. And so if you're looking to do that, this is a great place to check them out and do some, uh, some drone comparisons. So if you're not quite sure on what you want, this is a good way to check that out. All right, I think I've got everything that I need right here. So we have two sensors, actually four sensors right on the bottom. We've got them on either side. We have additional sensors, these long sensors on this side and photo eyes here and eyes here, as well as on the back. So you're gonna get front, back, and down, and all the sides, basically obstacle avoidance that we're not getting any of on this one, but you're getting much more obstacle avoidance than you're gonna get even on the Phantom 4 or the Mavic Pro. So definitely a nice feature to have. There's a ton of upgrades in this one, mostly revolved around the camera. So I'll tell you a little bit about it. Again, or the full reviews and I'll tell you a little bit more. You have a one inch sensor now, and that's gonna compete with a lot of higher end cameras. The bit rate is also higher. So you're talking 4K at, 4K at 60 frames per second. So I'm talking 4K slow motion, 100 megabits per second on that one, which is awesome. I mean, that's kind of like the recording bit rate of GH4s and Sony A7Ss and things like that, but you know, professional end cameras. And so much higher bit rate than you're getting with this one, which is 60 megabits per second. This one also only did 4K at 30 frames per second. So now we get 440, uh, 4K at up to 60 frames per second. A big addition too is a mechanical shutter. So if you're the kind of person that does photo shoots from your drone, that's gonna be a huge addition. You're probably not gonna to have to worry about some of that motion blur or uh, yeah, motion blur that you're gonna get if you're, you're doing a sensor scan without a mechanical shutter. And so that's a nice feature to have. Now, I did make note of some of the awesome features that I'm actually looking forward to. Uh, the biggest thing is gonna be that sensor and hopefully we get a little bit more quality from that sensor and obviously the bit rate as well. But one of them is gonna be the variable aperture. At the Phantom 3s and all the other ones, you're stuck at f2.8 and there's no way of changing the aperture, which means ND filters are your only option and obviously you can't vary those when you're in the air. So this is one of the coolest features. So if you're flying uh, closer to nighttime or things like that where your light is changing all the time, you have the ability to adjust your aperture right here and not just your shutter speed. So really cool for being able to control that. And then also trying to keep your shutter speed about at a 180 degree shutter is gonna be awesome. 
Uh, you do get higher ISO. Again, I'm, I don't try to fly these at night, but it might be a little bit better. I do see a good amount of grain on the Phantom 3. Again, it's kind of like GoPro quality, so hopefully this one is a little bit better on that one. The burst rate is double to about 14 frames per second. Not one that I care too much about, but you can now hold 128 gig uh, SD card, micro SD card, and I believe this one was limited to 64 gigs. Let's see. Uh, mechanical shutter, I did talk about that. And you have the 5.8 gigahertz, uh, which this one did not have. Actually, none of them have. So you'll be able to shoot. Uh, the Wi-Fi signals are going to go between your normal standard range and then the 5.8 gigahertz. So you're going to get a stronger signal, especially if you're flying in residential areas and things like that, where you might have a lot of spectrum that's being used up in your normal Wi-Fi frequencies. And so that's going to be great. Uh, again, your back camera is obstacle avoidance. A lot more cameras than you're used to on your other drones. And so definitely better on the obstacle avoidance side and being able to do some cool new follow me features and maneuverability when you're doing that. Now, there are some modes that you go into that disable those. So it's not with all the modes, but it's awesome to have. And really and truly, it does seem like an update that might be worth it for us. One of the things that I pretty much always do on all my drones is you're going to want at least one extra battery because it's just almost impossible to get the flight time that you need out of one battery. But again, uh, stay tuned for the full review, subscribe, and check out lumoid.com if you wanna rent a drone. They also have a bunch of cameras and stuff like 1DXs all the way to T6Is, I mean the whole host of cameras. And uh, another nice fe fe feature is if you're actually renting cameras, whatever you pay for the rental, 20% of that can actually go to purchasing the camera anytime within that year. Uh, once you've rented the camera. So that's a nice thing. You can't do that with drones, but it's a nice feature for cameras. But again, it's one of the few places that you can actually rent drones out there. So stay tuned. I'm going to be flying these and the Mavic Pro. A lot of cool things to come, and I'll see you soon.